Hey, what's going on, everyone? Today is Friday, January 7th, 2022. It snowed this morning. We had our first blizzard, not blizzard, snowstorm of the year. And I decided that we're gonna be closed today. We're all gonna take emergency service calls. A few calls came in, they understood. It was an emergency, scheduled them for Monday. Nonetheless, this lady just called. She has no heat, the pilot won't stay on. She's trying to relight it, just not staying lit. And I said, uh, you know, we're technically closed today, unless it's an emergency or you can wait until Monday. And she's like, listen, I, I rescue animals and uh, you know, I would hate to have them be cold for the next three days. And I said, I'll be there within the hour. Let's go save these puppies. Hopefully they're dogs, hopefully not cats. But regardless, God's creations, we'll still get them, give them some heat. She's got a Burnham gas boiler and we'll take care of them. All right, pull up your pants, put on your shoes, tie your boots, throw on a belt, and let's get going. I think I spoke too soon, I jinxed myself. I see a cat in the windowsill. Oh no. Oh, hey, okay. Oh, hi. God bless you. It's nice, you know, he's got a, it's not their fault, you know? No, they didn't have to be born. No. Ella, Ma. So you got a steam please. boiler. You try relighting the pilot? Uh, a thousand times. What happens when you do it? It, it goes out right away? Yeah. Right away? I hold it for like minutes, I pump it, I, uh, I don't know if it's that coil thing. Let's see. Yeah, it's just that coil thing. Uh oh. Uh oh. What happened? I don't like this. Uh oh. I know. What? <laughs> you got chunks of your boiler on top of the burners. How is that possible? That means the boiler is. Sorry to tell you. Dead. Lived a long life. Not that long, but. All right, we'll try to get it up and running for the weekend, though. But. Got a nice strong flame. Yes, that's what, yeah. Let's see. If anything, you know, whatever we do to this today is, it's again, just to right. buy you some time. Yes. And I'll show you what I mean when we fill up the boiler to test. Let's see if I let this go. Stays, goes out. Maybe down here for All right, well, as long as we can get her up and running safely for you now, but... How often do you hear it add water? Um, when I'm home, probably like every, like even when I fill it myself, yeah. it would still like really good. Like yeah. Every hour and a half. So. Every year? So several times a day? Yeah. How long has that been going on for? I'm not, I don't, I'm, I really don't pay attention just as long as I have heat. <laughs> oh, I've been lighting it. Let's see if we can get a view. Where's all this water from? Is water back there? Yeah. Really? Yeah. See? Oh, wow. I don't know. Yeah. Let me see if I can get a peek inside this one. Huh. This is... I'm too fat to fit through here. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Let's see. I'm only going to view. Do you want to No, I'm just taking the camera and videoing. See how bad it is up there. Because I'm sure it is, but... Let's see what it looks like. All right, so at this point of the service call, I show her the video of the top of the boiler. And I got the phone inside the 
the draft diverter and I got it pointed looking down at the heat exchanger. And you can see it for a very short clip of that. And I pause it and I show, look, and this is what it normally looks like. And this is what that far left, you know, if you're standing in front of the boiler, the far left side of the boiler looks like the inside of the heat exchanger. And yeah, she's, she's cracked, she's leaking. And that's the point of failure. All right, so the pilot's lit. Let's turn this to on. Let's fire this up. Wait for the low water cutoff to thermostat relay. And... Damper is closing. And now is. Oh, you have a nest. We have to wait for it to uh, start up. No? Oh, there it goes. Damper is opening. And we'll see. Hopefully, it starts up normally. And then we can test the exhaust to make sure it's burning safely. We can't get carbon monoxide from this, can we? Well, that's what I'm going to check for. Okay. Did the pilot go out again? Yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, change out the pilot burner. Ma'am, yeah. when was the last time the boiler was serviced? I don't remember. Okay. Honestly. All right. My uncle owns an air conditioning and heating service, and so my cousin will come every now and then. Okay. Just make sure it's running well and put all that good stuff. But they're useless to me because they're more air conditioning than they are heating. So. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you don't have central air conditioning. No. No, I have an AC in every room. <laughs> My electric bill is ridiculous though, because I keep it on for the animals. Yeah. All right. Like if, if my cousin can get me a good price on a boiler, will you guys still install it or do I have to buy it from you? Because I, I actually like the way you work. You seem to know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> and if I have to buy it from you, I will, because I'd rather do it right. I hear you. We'll get this thing up and running first. Yeah. How often should it be serviced every year? Yeah, it should be serviced every year. Okay. Should. No one really does that though, almost. Well, you know what? Until they have a problem, and then they do a, a major expense like replacing a boiler, and then they're like, "Yeah, let's do this every year to avoid that like ten thousand dollars expense," you know. <laughs> but before the wind service, probably yeah. does. The, with, with steam, though, the biggest the downfall with steam, with, with the, the killer of steam, is just adding too much water. And if it's, it's if it's losing water, you have to figure out where it's going. So, like the radiators, do they hiss continuously? They used to. I had all of them. The valves, the valves replaced. Oh, so when was that? Um, two years ago. So that might have been the, the, the cause. The one in my bedroom would leak a lot, and the one in the dining room upstairs would hiss. Okay. So by it hissing, it's, le it's, leaving, it's losing steam, and it has to be replaced. And that automatic feeder that you have there does that. And doing that over and over and over again 
will cause the, the top of the boiler to uh, rot out because of that fresh water. It doesn't like and they cast use iron. And they bang, like the walls use the bang, yeah. but it doesn't do that anymore either. I thought that issue was fixed, but I guess not. All right, let's get you in right there. Okay. This one is, hopefully, it'll be good to run. And then we'll test for carbon monoxide and all the other good stuff once we get the pilot on and stays on. We need a nice, better flame. I don't think the flame was where it should be. So how'd you hear about the company? Um, my friend Mark Greenstein, he... He has his name, he's, he knows you guys. He's oh. a plumber as well, but he just doesn't know boilers. Oh, okay. And, um, he, oh, he's a plumber as well, but he doesn't know boilers. Yes. That doesn't make any sense. Plumber and electrician. Like, he oh. does bathrooms and kitchens, but... Oh, okay. I, I don't think he specializes in... Okay. He, I've known him for years. So, you know, I didn't want to just go into the phone book. I had, you know, I could yeah. tell people, like, I need somebody who's good. And you guys are right in Valley Street. Yep. Hello. Do you live in Valley Street? Uh, yes. Oh. Nice, good flame. How long have you lived here? 30. All right. Much, much better now. Now. Let's. It's on. Much better now. The old one was. Wall in there. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> Heated cat houses. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see this flame when it kicks on. I got my hand on the switch. <laughs> let's make sure none of it rolls out. Let this run for a little bit and then we test exhaust gases. So let's go see the, the chimney. I want to see if there's white smoke coming out of it. And then I get to see the squirrels. The squ you probably won't see the squirrels now. I have the three houses oh. there. And these are cat houses. These are cat houses. Uh, can I open the door? Are they going to escape? Oh, you said no, you were outside no. smoking. You were, you weren't choking. <laughs> then I have that house there. This is a feeding station. And in the garage, I have this safe. I have houses under the table. <laughs> yep. Yep. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, so that's steam. That's steam going up your chimney. Going up the chimney and heating the atmosphere. Let's go back to the, the boiler and make sure that at least we are not going to have too much carbon monoxide, but unfortunately that number is pretty high and it's been that way for a while. So we're going to give a proposal for a new one. So... How many carbon monoxide detectors you have in the house? Two. How old are they? No, they're not that old. A few is two, a few is five. Two, it's three. three, probably three. Okay. Um, do you have the means to go to Home Depot today and get uh, three? Yeah. You need to put one downstairs in the basement, one on the first floor, one on the second floor. The reason why I say you need to get new ones is because they have a life expectancy of usually around three years. Really? Yes, generally. Can we see what you have? Yeah. Let me just see if I have another one here. Arts and crafts too? Yeah. <laughs> Anything exciting? Oh, Christmas stuff. Christmas, I do know. I do all holidays, but this was Christmas. Oh, good Christmas stuff. Too. Gotta keep myself busy. I'll show you later. I'd say three because you should have one in every livable part of the house. And this is a basement, but you know, you have a nice little kitchen down here. And yeah, the stove I, am, I took apart. Let me know when it's safe to test. Let me know when it's ready. 
close the door. So this is a very um, sensitive carbon dioxide monitor, so it's it'll show one. So which is what we have down here. But when did the heat go out? Um, I turned it on again last night before I went okay. to bed, and when I woke up this morning at like seven thirty or eight o'clock, it felt a little drafty. So okay. that's when I was sure. So oh, during the night. And you said you've let you relit the pilot many times. Many times. What do you mean by many times? Like, uh, like recently or like in your lifetime? No, recently. I've been lighting it like a lot. I thought it was a pilot light. I didn't think anything okay. else. The um, what's what's also maybe happening is that you know steam is leaving the top of the boiler and not going exclusively into this pipe right here, right? And if that's the case, which we know it is, because most of it's going, some of it's going up the chimney you have the possibility of like moisture or like droplets of water drip down the boiler. And hence that's the reason why those burners were all rusty like that. And I used the wire brush to clean them because water's dripping on top of those. And if water's dripping on top of the pilot, hence the, the flame will go out. Keep that in mind. My uncle was like, it's a draft. I'm like, there's no draft no, there's no down draft. here. So I am concerned that the levels of carbon monoxide this boiler is producing is, is high. However, with the damage that's inside the boiler there's really nothing I could do about that even if I were to like say you tell me hey Mike I want you to clean the boiler let's say you give me like two thousand dollars to do that right you can't because the damage is already there and it's just there's no band-aid for it there's not so the only alternative is replacing it yes, yes. so the majority of the boiler piping is correct you know this pipe comes up here it's done a little differently and if you read the manual it, sh it should be done differently but um, this has to get redone and I would keep the water feeder, but I would not enable it or not wire it to, uh, automatically give you water because for the first month or two or for the rest, remainder of the, the, the heating season or whenever you replace the boiler, cause it doesn't have to be tomorrow, but it should be I know, soon. I, I wanted to, um, especially with carbon monoxide, but don't be, don't let, you know, yes, it's producing high levels of carbon monoxide, but not many plumbers or HVAC guys have what I have. Gotcha. I believe in te we believe in testing to confirm. You know what good is just fixing the heat if we know if we don't know if it's running properly. This one is not running properly, but will it kill you? Realistically, no. And I say that because there's a safety sensor on the on the, the chimney, you know, the, on the silver box, that if it ever sense the draft is coming into the house, it's going to sense that and turn the boiler off. And the only way to turn it back on is by resetting it. And you don't know how to do that. No. <laughs> um, also, if the flames were rolling out the front of the boiler, you know, there's a rollout switch there and it'll burn out. And you can relight the pilot all you want and it'll stay on, but it'll never turn on. You know what happened last week, though? I actually burnt my finger. I didn't realize one of the coils was hot sideways and oh. then the flame was coming out towards me. Stupid me touched oh. it to turn it. I just injured the action. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh,. That's that. Yeah. That is a big rabbit. Yeah, this is one of the smartest breeds. Yeah, they were, that's why they uh, were breeding. I have, a, I have a friend who has these two big giant rabbits and he just lost one. Aww. His name is Peter. He's got red eyes too, huh? Yeah. Wow. All right, uh, so you have the radiator in there. Okay, yeah. sorry. Then All right. they have one behind the couch. And so why the why the the great I mean why the potato red around the bed? Because he was chewing and I was afraid that the bed was gonna he chews oh. everything was gonna fall on top of him. Or oh, half the wood is missing. He's got his Timothy head. He eats everything. <laughs> so I have one more. Okay. Everything. Good. And how many? And one in the dining room? No. no okay. More Kitchen? No. No. Okay. Then I have one in this one. Okay, small one. One in 
in my room, which is I keep open so it heats up. Why well, doesn't heat up if it's not? Not really. Hmm. Okay. I just think it's because I don't have carpeting. I don't know. Okay. And then one here. And is that, do they all heat up now? Yes. Okay. All right, so I just finished up that service call. Sad, you know? The boiler's from 2007 and is damaged beyond repair, you know? I guess you can always order the blocks and push them together, but that's not done. It's a shame, but at least for the weekend, we gave her some heat. I advise her to go buy some new carbon monoxide monitors and detectors. I told her the importance of doing that. Use my little uh, Testo combustion, I was combustion. <laughs> my Testo uh, personal uh, carbon monoxide monitor. And uh, you know, we had zero one throughout the house. So she's also a, a cigarette smoker. So I don't think she smokes in the house. The house did not smell like smoke, but it's possible. You know, the adjacent enclosed, uh, patio that she has but she's good for now gave her a price for a new one let her think it over you know no sales pressure just this is what we can do and this is the price and if you want us to proceed you know we'll order the equipment and get it done in a timely fashion and redoing the near boiler piping and throwing in a drop header and maybe even use both tappings off top just because it just it's so much better of a, a job when you do it that way all right guys that's all for today hope you enjoyed this you know it's something to look out for when you're doing these kind of service calls or even if you're a homeowner you're watching this you know your pilot is out on your burn them steam boiler if you know you got chunks of debris in there think about where they came from and when in doubt have it checked out all right, guys, be well, God bless, stay safe.